Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Guys, I know it's my job to keep you abreast of the dumbest of people, but I'll tell you what, as I do political commentary today for the Media Speaks, I don't even want to say that every month there is more idiots, real boobs, than any other month. Because every month it seems like I'm saying, guess what, there's more boobs than any other month, as I knock the dust cap over. Um, that's the day going me. The, the problem here is this. It really is the biggest collection of idiots. Now, go ahead, just jump through the show if you're one of those people that scan through. Every single person and institution that I'm about to list in this show is the stupidest, most boneheaded, as backwards people extant today. I mean absolute idiots. This is from BizPack Review, Michael uh, Dorswitz. Obama, I'm no big government liberal. That's like Mussolini saying I'm no fascist. The man is the very definition of a big government liberal. Only a big government liberal could cost you your otherwise decent health insurance. Listen to this. Get ready. Obama may have chalked up yet another PolitiFact Lie of the Year award. For those of you that don't know, PolitiFact rates how bad politicians lie, and Obama always ranks quite high. President Obama claimed that contrary to the widely held perception that he's a big government crazy liberal, he actually welcomed regulatory reform in his administration. That's like saying, you know, Stalin wasn't such a bad guy. He bought his mother flowers once. At a National Governors Association in luncheon on Monday, the president asked the gathering to send him their list of the most illogical and frustrating regulations enacted under his term in office. I don't believe in regulations for regulation's sake, he told the governors. The idea that somehow I get to pick, I get a kick out of big government, which is simply not the case. It's not like I get up every morning and say, how can I add more work for me? If there's something to stop doing or to do better, we should change it. We have, ever, we have very stringent and very tight on our numbers. All now check out, he said, even on some of the big regulations that you don't like. For those of you that think I'm some big government crazy liberal, we crunch some numbers around here. We take it seriously. Now keep in mind that by the time he leaves the White House, the national debt, it says, will have doubled by 10, from $10 trillion to $20 trillion. You can see it here. Look, look on fact cam. Right out of the gate, he added $1 trillion stimulus funds that did nothing. Regulations have spiked under him. It's destroying the coal industry, regulating small lakes, um, Obamacare, he's had a takeover of the auto industry, and uh, he does have the Liar of the Year award from uh, PolitiFact for a reason. Friends, uh, EAG News Christian High School Guidance Counselor dons a hijab to welcome Muslims. Now, when's the last time you've known the Muslim community to don't adorn crucifixes to welcome Christians? Never happens. Kansas City, Kansas, North Kansas High School Guidance Counselor, one idiot Martha DeVries. She may have been well-intentioned, so I'm not going to hit her that hard on this show. There's, much, there's even more bigger idiots coming, trust me. She decided to wear a hijab to work every Monday for six months because she felt compelled as a Christian to support Muslims. Um... Two Muslim women from Egypt and India who recently penned an editorial for the Washington Post believes those types of efforts could be doing more harm than good. This modern-day movement spreads an ideology of political Islam called Islamism, enlisting well-intentioned interfaith do-girders and the media into prompting the idea that the hijab is a virtual sixth pillar of Islam. Um, this modern-day movement codified by Iran, Saudi Arabia, Taliban, Afghanistan, and the Islamic State, that would be ISIS for you Kesha fans, has erroneously made the Arabic word hijab synonymous with the word headscarf. This 
conflation of hijab with the secular word headscarf is misleading. Hijab literally means curtain in Arabic. It also means hiding or obstructing. In other words, she has decided that she was going to be more welcoming. And really what she's done is brought about more of the stereotypes that are already known of the religion to begin with. And uh, some Muslim women have come to this country specifically not to have to cover themselves. Uh, let's remember, when you really break it down, um, the reason that the hijab and uh, the burqa, for that matter, among some sects is worn, because men, are, I guess, can't handle looking at a woman without attacking her and raping her, if you doubt me, then uh, you may want to ask what certain populations of uh, the community have done to people in Germany. Um, truth revolt. Trey Sanchez getting dumber and dumber as we go. Britain's Labour Party suggests having tea with ISIS, not airstrikes. Oh, Buffy, can you get me some tea? I want to stop this man from cutting off my head. A key ally of Britain's Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, has suggested a ridiculous but very British way of dealing with ISIS. According to Telegraph, instead of dropping bombs on the Islamic terror group, try having tea with them. Friends, if I could afford to send out dunce caps to other countries, First of all, when uh, Cameron was found to have had uh, oral sex with a dead pig, look it up, it's fact, um, that he would have gotten one. He, as it is, he got the certificate. Um, if, <laughs> if there's going to be a level of stupidity that cannot be matched in Britain currently, it would be this idiot. The religion of peace that longs to cut your head off for perhaps not even wearing a burqa, as we mentioned earlier, to tie everything together. If you just have tea, you know, with the group that crucified a man on Easter Sunday, uh, a pastor, like, let's, let's just have tea with them. And everything will be bloody okay. Or at least it'll be bloody. The woman responsible for offering this friendly invitation is a sitting member of the party's National Executive Committee, Christine Sharcroft. The Telegraph notes. So do me a favor. I do these shows for a reason. Contact Mrs. Sharcroft and let her know that she is one of the stupidest people that you have ever heard of. And you may want to think twice about uh, voting uh, voting that way on the next cycle. What do you say? Um, and more from Trey Sanchez, Truth Revoked. The Huffington Post, which is a dreadful newspaper to begin with, and uh, online magazine, whatever you want to call it, wants to correct the definition of jihad. In other words, it's best to just gloss over the fact that radical Islam is slaughtering hundreds, if not thousands, of people. ISIS has struck again, this time in Brussels. Uh, thankfully, the Huffington Post recently released a video asking five Muslims to explain what jihad really means. Keep this clarified definition in your mind during news reports of the latest ISIS bombing. Sitting with a handful of hand-picked young Muslims, including two editors at an outlet, an imam and a comedian, Huffington Post asked for their reactions to simply hearing the term jihad, and here is what some of them said. When I first heard the word, I got defensive. I'm like, no, no, it's not what you think. I just sort of seize up. It's upsetting. Very grossly misunderstood and misrepresented term. They were then asked the very public, how the public perceives the word jihad, and it's always paired with images of suicide bombers, large terrorist attacks, essentially harnessing narratives for the other, that can turn into whatever you want it to be. And it's a Muslim's duty to go and start killing people. And it's like, that's not what it's all about. Well, the Muslim comedian suggests Googling jihad to find out the true meaning. He then explained that all it really means is a struggle. Oh, it just means a struggle. Well, let's remember, Mein Kampf means my struggle. And that is, of course, the book that Adolf Hitler wrote. Um, jihad might mean something very peaceful to those 
that say it doesn't mean cutting off heads, but there are a very large number of people to whom jihad means cutting off the head. And you changing Huffington Post, you changing the definition, it's laughable. It's going to do absolutely nothing. Zero hedge. As we get dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber, I want you to contact these people that I'm letting you know. Let them know how stupid you found them to be. Egyptian plane a hijack by a lovesick idiot demanding to see ex-wife in Cyprus. Um, I, the reason, besides it being overseas, the reason I'm letting a little bit of leash go on this individual is that obviously the despair of this man has completely broken his mind. He's more sick than stupid, but we're going to go with it anyway. The 81 passengers aboard Egypt Air Flight MS-181 got quite a scare on Tuesday when an Airbus 320, 320 en route from Alexandria to Cairo was hijacked by a man who claimed to be wearing an explosive belt. And here's the tweet that he had earlier in the morning. It's officially been hijacked. We'll, punish an we'll publish an official statement from Egypt Air. Now, one of the idiots... I should add that we're on board this plane. Took a selfie with the hijacker. Just to step aside as we talk about idiots here. Given recent events, it was only logical to suspect that we'd be talking about Egypt Air as a, the latest string of a tragic attacks by ISIS militants. No, fortunately, that's not the case. Um, Mustafa was sitting in seat case 38, and apparently he threatened the pilot Omar al Galmar with an explosive belt. Egyptian authorities were immediately skeptical. As you can see, I'm going to put it here on a fact cam and on a screen share. You can tell right away it's not real, but you have no idea what the man actually does have in there. I mean, who knows? You, you don't want to get splashed in the face with acid either. Um, not that it's very easy to get acid onto an airplane, but you know what I mean. You, you err on the side of caution. But there the guy is. Wanted to see his wife. He says he's not a terrorist, he's an idiot. He wanted to see his wife, so what he did was hijack an airplane. And uh, she was being brought to the airport for negotiations. He also wanted 63 women in prison, in prison in Egypt to be freed. Pending those demands, the co-pilot and three passengers were still being held on the plane. Pure genius right there. Um, Lee Rockwell blog, Daniel McAdams, in Syria, Assad liberates Pal Palmyra while the CIA battles the Pentagon. What you basically have here is the United States, your tax dollars, mind you, sending money overseas to help people that mere months later are our enemies and we're fighting. The big news out of Syria says over the past weekend, a couple of days, has been that Syrian government forces, with the help of Russian military, have taken back control of Palmyra from ISIS. The fall of Palmyra and subsequent destruction of the spectacular Roman ruins there by ISIS horrified the civilized world. It goes on that the U.S. government had claimed from the beginning that the Russians were not targeting ISIS at all, but only the moderate rebels supported by Washington. That line now stands bare in newly liberated Palmyra and onward as Syrian government troops aided by the Russians speed eastward toward the capital and the Islamic State of Raqqa. It goes on that meanwhile, the five-year U.S. regime change effort in Syria chugs along in a very different way, and we learned from the L.A. Times report yesterday that the U.S. is now at war with itself in Syria. And they say that we dislike Obama because of the color of his skin. You know, the color of his skin might be the only reason I don't dislike the man for. I could care less what color his skin is. He doesn't have anything in his head. When Syrian government troops and Russians are dealing the death blow to ISIS in Syria, one set of rebels supported by the Central Intelligence Agency is at war with another set of rebels supported by the Pentagon. That's right, while the Syrian government troops and the Russians are dealing the death blow here, apparently for the past several months, CIA-backed Fursan al Hajj and Pentagon-backed Syrian Democratic Forces have intensified their war against each other. According to Adam Schiff, a staunch interventionist finds the situation an enormous challenge, adding that it's part of the three-dimensional chess game on the battlefield. No, 
It's a sign that whether you like him or not, Donald Trump is painfully right. We need to get the hell out of this area. And this has been said by Ron Paul and people uh, on a, the libertarian mindset as well. If you hate Donald Trump but you agree that he's right on this like all thinking people do, then vote for Gary Johnson. He'll get you out of this mess. And that's what we need. Um, before we get to the absolute final stretch of dumdies here, let's go to Breitbart. Rebecca Monsauer. GOP establishment elites discuss how to stop Trump and says that all he has going for him is the votes. Now, do you understand what that means? It means that they're saying the only thing he has is the support of a majority of you and I and other people. But that doesn't mean anything. That's all he has, as if it's utterly worthless. At a private luncheon in Washington, D.C., a group of GOP establishment figures gathered to lament the rise of Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump has pulled the party together and brought people into it in droves. Uh, Christelle was a Democrat um, when I met her, and she became a Libertarian when she realized what was going on in the world, as you will too if you look it up. Um, she switched ever so briefly to Republican for Ron Paul, and then uh, is currently with me on the uh, Let's Go Go Trump uh, efforts here. Well, if we're cheated out of who we voted for, we're not going to just vote for whoever you tell us to. Costello and I, for instance, are going to vote Gary Johnson for sure then. Don't tempt me, I did it last time. I interviewed his running mate for a half hour, uh, Jim Gray, one of the most intelligent, well-spoken, friendly interviews I've ever done. Um, Rick Holt, major GOP fundraiser, says everybody around this table that I know, we've been in every presidential campaign since 1980 to various degrees. And in Trump's problem, he doesn't have a compass. You don't know what his compass is. And they ask how problematic it's going to be for the future. And he says, I talk to people all the time, and I'm sure everybody around the table does. Why don't you Republicans do something about this guy? And he says it's not the Soviet Union. But then he goes on to say that the only thing Trump has is votes. You can see it there on Fat Kid. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you and bore you out. Hit pause. I'm scrolling it slow if you're on high def. Low def, do the same. You're on screen share. The only thing they have is your votes. And of course that doesn't mean anything at all, does it? No, not a bit, not a bit. Friends, all of this is brought to you by Sticker Junkie and your donations. How can you donate to the show? Uh, the correct view is at Hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show, a much better show. And um, I use the money you give me for lights, computers, resources, study time. Uh, this takes hours to do, by the way. Hours every day. I also want to give a shout out to Sticker Junkie who supports the show. If you go to StickerJunkie.com, you're going to be thrilled that you did it. And you're going to get an amazing discount. When you go there, let them know at checkout. Say, hey, type in correct views. Type in the correct views. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to find that you just saved a freaking fortune. That's what you're going to find. Because they support the show, they support Liberty, and they support the Dunce Camp of the Month, which we're going to go on with here now we get into the real idiots of the show. The, the first batch of runner-ups is done. The second batch of runner-ups will literally blow your mind that this is, in fact, how stupid people really are. DCWhispers.com, I think it's their first time on the show. Welcome aboard. Romney urges voters not to support Kasich one week after campaigning for Kasich. This is the kind of man that would fund the people that we are fighting in Syria. I mean, God, last week, just before the Ohio primary, Mitt Romney strode side by side with the state's governor and presidential hopeful John Kasich and declared Kasich to be the only candidate in the GOP race with a real track record of success. And he implored Ohio voters to do the right thing. I proudly voted for Trump. And to help send Kasich to Washington, D.C. for the, to be the next American president. Now, today, according to a just-released NBC report, the very same Mitt Romney is singing an entirely different tune via recorded robocalls for the Ted Cruz campaign. That have Mr. Romney warning Utah and Arizona voters 
that Kasich, a vote for Kasich is a vote for Donald Trump, and that Ted Cruz is the only candidate who can f defeat Donald Trump. So there you go. Is there any wonder at all why people in droves did not vote for this idiot? And friends, you, I, I don't even know how to tell you this, but we're, we're getting into the most disgusting story, perhaps, that you've seen this year, except for the, uh, the rape stories. And I mean, as far as, like, not, no rapes, no murders. What's that I hear? Woman charged over footage showing oral sex with two dogs. Not one, but two dogs. She had a threesome, I guess. I don't know. And here's a picture of her. Let me put her on fat cam. You can hear the uh, the happy puppies in the background, as it were. Oh my God. Um, a young woman was arrested after police were presented with video footage, allegedly showing her engaged in oral sex with two dogs. That's a dog on shame. Miranda Johns, doggy lover, is charged with three counts of engaging in sexual conduct with an animal. Well, the left will be in favor of it. It's just her gender identity. Police in Florida were initially investigating allegations that the 21-year-old woman had been assaulted by a man, and the man is then believed to have been produced a recording showing Johns with a pair of dogs. According to the Collier County Arrest Port, deputies were interviewing a man on suspicion of sexual battery, and he reportedly denied battering Johns and instead showed deputy videos Johns sent of him, of herself engaging in oral sex with two dogs. Ah, oh, it was sent during text message and now Johns, Johns no less, what a name. From the town of Naples has now been released from Crowler County Jail after paying $4,000 bail, so now the doggy sex life has been ruined. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, PrisonPlanet.com. We're going to get into the, the lie, the myth of white privilege, the, oh my god, every white person is a racist, oh, it's, 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 it's bullshit is what it is, but we're going to go ahead and mock it here. Let's listen to the fair-minded activist here, and this is not an attack on black people, this is an attack on anybody that believes in white pain range. Activist white people should kill themselves to atone for white privilege. Of which there is none. To look up Correct Views White Privilege, I do a whole section dispelling the entire thing. There is no white privilege. What there is is divisionalism from our leaders that want to divide us and have us fighting about race and uh, color and religion and ethnicity and gay and straight. That is the game, friends. It is not about what color we are. A YouTube video shows two black student activists from the University of West Georgia asserting that white people should kill themselves in order to atone for white privilege. And you can see the debate here. It was held at the Harvard University and features Demir Davis and Miguel Felician from the University of West Georgia who won second place in the 2013 cross-examination debate association finals. Excuse me. When a white debater asks if his friend should kill himself, he says, I don't see why not. It's ethical. This is considered the great debating minds of our time. And I guess the, the brilliant debater couldn't be bothered to learn that almost all white people, that are currently alive had no ties to slavery. For instance, uh, I don't believe any of my family was even here yet. And if they were, they were not rich enough to own slaves. You want to know who owned slaves? I can tell you. Rockefellers, uh, uh, the, the rich, the elite of the time, if you will. Let me be more precise. The, the elite, the one percenters, were the people that owned slaves, many of which who have families that are still in power. It was not your average white guy, so get over it already, you bonehead. Your time, your 15 minutes of fame is up because we realize you're an idiot. American University professor saying all lives matter is white supremacy. Yes, um, do me a favor, make sure you get a hold of this school. This is uh, Campus Reform Anthony uh, Gakowski. Dozens of professors from America University Washington College of Law 
call them, leave a message letting them know how outraged you are. Or I'm doing this show for nothing. Is anybody listening? Let me know in the comment line. Openly condemned an unknown student as a white supremacist for posting a sign with the catchphrase, All Lives Matter, and says that that is being used by white supremacists. Let me let you in on something, you stupid bastard. You brainless moron. White supremacists, by their very definition, do not believe that all lives matter. Okay, white supremacists often kill black people and minorities, as do uh, as does the, uh, the radical uh, black movement oftentimes beat and kill white people, like the, the polar bear attacks and all that. It exists on both sides. But you cannot say that a white supremacist, by and large, believes that all lives matter. As a matter of fact, they tend to believe the exact opposite. Stupid moron, how did you ever become a professor? UNC campus reform, same author, Anthony Gorkowski. Diversity Workshop says that beige band-aids are white privilege. Of course, because, you know, it doesn't look like their skin color. Let me tell you what. It doesn't look like most white people's skin color either. Also, you can find band-aids of many different colors. They are somewhat white in appearance because that is who buys the most band-aids. Do you know in other nations, the band-aids are of different colors all over the spectrum? There are different uh, flesh tones, I believe, even in Asian countries. No, of course not. Because everything is American racism. Now listen to this. This is more stupidity about white privilege. It says, uh, I can wear a dress in secondhand clothes and not answer letters without having people attribute to illiteracy of my races. Not answering letters. What the hell is he even talking about? Another cultural competency activity called Uncovering the Hidden Rules of Class. Students were in respect of class based on whether or not they could complete certain tasks. Like finding rummage sales. Supposedly all of this, if you believe that you can do it as a white person but not a black person, this doesn't make any sense at all. It's rambling. It's dividing us against each other on notions that have no basis in reality. If this sounds stupid to you, that's why I'm doing my commentary on it. Because we, have been, as a nation, have gone this stupid. It's all around us. People are believing in unicorns, for crying out loud. It, it, you'd be better off believing in unicorns than white privilege. Literally, this is ridiculous, friends. Um, dozens of students in fear after Trump 2016 is chalked across campus. What they're trying to say is that if you support Trump, you're a racist, so you're scaring people who are of different races. Let me tell you something. He is the front runner of the GOP, and he has zero ties to races. He is not a racist in any way. There is nothing unusual about supporting the front running Democrat or the front running Republican. The nation is roughly 50-50, so the fact that half the people would support Trump would obviously prove to you two things. First of all, that if there, most people, I know, there's, I'm a libertarian, I get it, but for most people there's only two parties. So it's not unusual that you would want Trump since he's leading one of them. Second of all, if 50% of the population roughly is supporting Trump, and you know that 50% of the population isn't racist, then you must know that he isn't racist. But no, several students at Emory University in Atlanta requested a meeting with the school's president after the words Trump 16 were scrolled across our campus. Jim Wagner, the president of the university, said Tuesday that he had spoken with some 40 to 50 students after they claimed that they were triggered all by the words Trump 2016 and other pro-Trump messages written in chalk. Aww. Well, maybe if somebody writes, fill the barn, Maybe the Trump supporters are going to feel triggered. They're triggered because we know that socialism, under Stalin, killed more people than the bastard Hitler did. That's communism. That's socialism. So maybe I'm triggered if I see the word 
fill the burn. Right, fill, see the words fill the burn. How, how about that? This is stupidity. There's nothing racist about wanting to know who is in your country. There is nothing racist about wanting people to come legally. And he's going to make it easier for people to do that and make it cheaper. But we do need to know who people are. If you don't believe me, ask Paris, ask Belgium, ask Germany. Steve Watson, prison planet, student president, freaks out over Trump 2016 written on a whiteboard. Triggered. Oh, this is from Scripps College, California. Oh, call them and let them know that they have a bunch of wusses for students. Sent out an email headed racist incidents because someone wrote 20s, Trump 2016 and the student president promised the culprit would be identified. This is a racist act and is completely unacceptable. There's nothing racist about supporting the man who is going to do great things for all races and that would include black people. That would include white people. Asians, Indians. The man is not racist, but these people are stupid. Yes, I said it. Uh, Bernie Sanders decides to outdo all of everyone here on the uh, on the, uh, the the racism stupidity update of our Dust Cap of the Month show. Carmine Sabia writes for BizPack. Sanders steps in, declares the white people don't know what it's like to be poor. Well, I have Mayan Indian in me. I have Irish in me. I have Sicilian in me. English, Welsh, where's French? French, for the most part, I'm a white guy. My dad was an LPN, and we had a good standard of living. Until his degenerative disc disease got to him. He worked two jobs for a long time. My dad was not a slacker. My dad was a very hard worker. He got to the point where he could not walk. And prior to getting on disability, he was literally crippled. I mean, degenerative disc disease ate his uh, discs and spinal system away. Um... We became very poor very quick. Um, I remember once he was literally crying. He was so upset that we got food from the church delivered to us. We were poor. When Dad got sick, we were poor. And even towards the end of his life, my parents got an infestation of bed bugs, probably from a taxi because they couldn't afford a car. And, I mean, it swarmed the house. It, it, we, Mom had to move. Okay, don't tell me there isn't poverty with white people. I'm a DJ, and I am low middle class, but I'm not starving. Okay, I'm fine. But don't, I, I've been poor. I've been, prior to this job, I was poor. I've had to go bankrupt, and I've never owned a car that cost more than three grand. Um, maybe four. Um, I didn't have no big screen TVs, no large living, yo, none of that. None of that was poor. I couldn't eat, my wife and I barely ate. My first wife. We barely ate. I remember one day when I didn't get to eat at all. I couldn't afford it. It was terrible. Um, it's bad, friends. If, if I was to lose my job now, I'd be in the same boat. And I guarantee you, there's a lot of white people listening to this that are singing the same sad story. But no... No, no, no. You know, bed bugs swarming your house from a city cab that you can't afford to get rid of does not make whitey poor. No, not according to the bonehead Bernie Sanders, which is why I can't imagine why anybody would vote for this cockroach. Bernie Sanders played an entire deck of race cards in one fell swoop at the Democratic debate Sunday night, but it was his take on poverty that earned a, a face palm. The Vermont senator did his pandering best to wrestle the black vote away from Hitler and Clinton by accusing police officers of terrorizing black people. The usual shtick. I'm not just talking about the horrible shootings that we have seen, which have to end, but we've got to hold the police officers accountable, he said. I'm talking about everyday activities where police officers are bullying people. But then he goes on. When you're white, you don't know what it's like to be living in the ghetto. You don't know what it's like to be poor. Do me a favor and look up 44703 because that's where my white ass was born at. And you know what? That's where my ass is at now. I mean, pure absolute stupidity of the highest level. 
Plain and simple, friends. It doesn't get dumber than that comment. If you vote for him, this is the kind of class division that you can expect from Bernie Sanders. EAG News. Teacher forced to resign after student steals and shares nude pictures from her phone. They blamed the teacher for a thug stealing her phone and rummaging through her private phone uh, data without permission. She got fired for it. I wanted this to be the dunce cap of the month. I really, really did. This and Sanders, I really, really was sold on them. But you'll hear with the last two stories that come after this that we do in fact have some great stupidity coming. Union, South Carolina. Now, if you don't, leave me a message. If you call this school, leave me a message. I'm going to send you something awesome. I'm going to send you something awesome. Record yourself leaving a message. One message, don't harass. Leaving a message for this school. Union, Union County Schools. Union, South Carolina, Union County School Superintendent. Leave a message letting them know that you stick up for Leanne Arthur. If you do that, I will send you something awesome. I have been known to send people silver in the past. I will send you something awesome. Film yourself calling Union County Schools in Union, South Carolina. Let me tell you why. A student stole teacher Lee Ann MacArthur, who I want you to stick up for, her cell phone, found a new picture on the device, then sent the image to other students through text messages and social media. In other words, disgraced the innocent woman. The situation prompted school officials to take action against the teacher by giving Arthur an ultimatum, either resign or the district will initiate a termination process. The Union County Schools Superintendent David Eubanks told the state, so do me a favor, Film yourself sticking up for her, and I promise you I will send you something awesome. I think that we have the right to privacy, but when we take inappropriate information or pictures, we had best make sure it remains private. Students had access to inappropriate material. He didn't have access to her, and it was not inappropriate. It was appropriate for her, of which she gets to decide. Half of your students probably can't figure out what sex they are, and they're allowed to do that. This is ridiculous. They are sure of how, unsure of how many people uh, have seen her pictures. It says he's 16. He's going to be make stupid decisions. He is 16 and he should be thrown in the DH for theft for a year. That's what should happen. Absolute mind rot. Stick up for her, friends. Leave her. Let's, we, let's make a video. Show me that you did it. If you send it to me at uh, the correct views on hotmail.com, I will post it. If you want to send it to me and want me to post it, I will. I will send you something cool, I promise. And friends, that brings us to the last two, the last two dummies. Um, this is the runner-up. This is where you can tell that people of the Black Lives Matter ilk, for the most part, have a very low understanding of history, as do most people on the left and an ever-growing number of people on the right, to be fair. Let's remember how dumb Mitt Romney is, we just went over it. It is true that people in the Caribbean islands and throughout parts of Africa have created dreadlocks. It is also true that Egyptians, that'd be Middle East, for you Russia fans, that'd be Middle East, and Vikings, now to be whitey, also created dreadlocks without knowing that the other cultures had already done it. They sprung up naturally, not that hard to imagine, you didn't have shampoo at the corner store, and it became a way to style your hair rather than just have it mat into a clump. I do believe Eric the Red had dreads. Well, don't try to tell that to this idiot who damn near got the dunce cap of the month. And if this continues, I'm tempted to dread my hair just to piss these bastards off. Must we go over, even in modern times, a couple of facts. First of all, African Americans have said for a long time that they are not properly represented. So the media now has... Nicki Minaj, 
promoting fat asses. Why, I don't know. She looks atrocious. But in any event, people are going out now and getting butt implants and ruining what was otherwise a beautiful ass. That is not appropriating black culture. That is so-called black culture, and I would never say that that's black culture because I think most black people are far smarter than that, no matter what the media says. Um, that is not appropriating black culture. If you sell rap music to Whitey, then don't bitch when Whitey listens to rap music, for instance. We shouldn't even be divided among race anyway, but I'm using their thinking, by the way, when I say this. I think we all just need to get along and smoke a joint together to tell you the truth. But did I just say that? The point is, we have divisionism among people that don't know anything about history. Okay, they know nothing about history. College Fix, Mark uh, Schreerbecker. Black student who attacked white student for his dreadlocks is under investigation. Yeah, I would hope so. Look at this twit. This has to be one of the stupidest people to ever be associated with a college. He claims that she threatened to mutilate his hair, too. San Francisco State University said it's investigating an altercation captured on video Monday that appears to show, it does show, a black female physically attacking a white male because of his dreadlocks. Though the school didn't identify the students in its Tuesday statement, it said neither is an employee. That appears to be the response early morning claims on Twitter that the black woman is Benita Tyndall, whose LinkedIn page, who you should go to, there's a link to it, says she's an intern for both the Campus Women's Center and the Associated Students Incorporated. And it's a 49 second video. And it, uh, the black woman is interrogating a campus employee, shows her interrogating and even grabbing a white man with dreadlocks and later hitting another man who's filming the incident, saying that he doesn't have the right to wear his hair that way. First of all, he has the right to wear his hair however he damn well pleases. Second of all, Al Jorgensen, white guy, dreadlocks. Rob Zombie, white guy, dreadlocks. I mean, this is ridiculous. Already shared widely on Reddit and 4chan by Tuesday morning, the video features the woman in black male standing with her reportedly, uh, repeatedly accusing the white student of cultural appropriation for having dreadlocks. And he says, you're saying that my hairstyle, I can't have this hairstyle because of your culture. And she says, yes, it's an African tradition. And uh, he says, do you know it was in the Egyptian culture? Are you Egyptian, he asks. Before saying, no, bro, you're not. Goldstein tries to get past her, but the woman catches his sleeve and drags him back. This hag needs to be thrown out of the school. Look at this. We're going to go to screen share here. You're saying that I can't have a hairstyle because of your culture? Yeah. Because it's my culture. Because it's my culture. Because it's my culture. Because it's my culture. Do you know what it is in Egyptian culture? Are you Egyptian? No, no, I'm not. Are you Egyptian? No, but they you know. Wait, where's Egypt? You know what, girl? Where's Egypt? You have no right to tell me what I can wear. Huh? Where's Egypt? 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 Where's
They're clearly making fun. I was in Hitler. Dusseldorf and that is why they call me Rolf. Don't be stupid, be a smarty. Come and join the Nazi party. Post it. Now, friends, clearly, Mel Brooks, who is in fact Jewish and wrote this, it stars the original Willy Walker for crying out loud, is accused that the school has taken offense with the correct production of that play because they have a zero tolerance towards showing swastikas. Even though the swastika and the way they're using it is making fun of it. It's like flushing a Quran down the toilet, if you will. It is not a compliment to the Quran to do so. Ask them. They cut your head off for it. Um, showing the swastika, as Mel Brooks did it, is a, and I'm happy for it, an insult to the evil, rottenous swine that was Adolf Hitler. Okay? This is why the Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes to Tappan Zee High School. Because administrators, this is from Reason.com, it's an awful, awful site, full of news that's usually half-baked and skewed to the left, but this is a must-hear, have ordered the removal of swastikas from high school production of the producers, the now-famous Mel Brooks film that makes fun of Nazism. The New York School District that oversees Tappan Zee High School considers the inclusion of the swastika to be offensive and possibly a hate crime, regardless of the context. There is no context in a public school where the swastika is appropriate. South Orange Town Superintendent Bob Pritchard told the local CBS station. Uh, Luna, I'll tell you what, I'll extend it. Uh, for a while, if you film yourself calling... South Orange Town Superintendent Bob Pritchard, I will also send you something awesome. I promise you, it'll be awesome. Let them know that this is just pure stupidity. Let them know. Stand up for it. Let me know if you've been listening to this. The kids in the play had a different reaction. They said it's satire. It's not supposed to be taken seriously, said Tyler Lowe, the student performer. CBS notes that Lowe himself is a Jew. It's not surprising that the teens understand the play better than the strict district does. The plot concerns a pair of producers who put together a deliberately bad, patently offensive pro-Hitler play in order to profit from its commercial failure. They are thwarted when the play is a hit and the audience assumes it's satire. High schoolers aren't children. Presumably they can participate in a play that concerns Nazism with somehow coming away thinking that Nazism is good. Similarly, it says... It asks, can't the play show a swastika without anyone mistakenly believing that school is endorsing the symbol? Contrary to what the district thinks, context does matter. If a swastika appears on a Jewish student's locker, it's a hate crime. If it appears in a textbook, it's not. The danger comes when authority figures try to shelter kids from offensive ideas and symbols. It's better to let them behold the swastika and laugh at it than to live in fear of it. Makes sense to me, right? As Mel Brooks, the creator of The Producers, said in a 2001 interview, I was never crazy about Hitler. If you stand on the soapbox and trade rhetoric with a dictator, you never win. That's what they do so well. They seduce people. But if you ridicule them, which is what this show does, bring them down with laughter, they can't win. You show just how crazy they are. And that, friends, means I have to show you the dunce cap and read you the award that is being sent to them. For those of you that don't know, I make these and send these out. Um, dunce. But then again, on the other side, Dumkoff. Where, where is it? Dumkoff and dunce. There's a Nazi flag with a little school teacher looking person saying, Must not mock. There's old uh, mustache himself, Mel Brooks, a known Nazi. I'm sending this to them, and I'm sending them this. The award. 
This dunce cap of the month award goes to you, uncultured idiots at Tappan Z High School for finding offense in a play that mocks the evil that was Nazi Germany. Ironically, giving a glowing example of why zero tolerance is never a good idea. You not only missed the chance to reach students with a bit of history about World War II, but you also seem to miss the fact that the writer of the play, Mel Brooks, is Jewish. You have managed to take the humor away, I wrote, from one of the funniest plays of the 20th century under the bounds, under the, excuse me, under the banner of political correctness that has gone from slightly outside the bounds of common sense and into the realm of the utterly stupid. I went on that you should not be surprised if someday Mr. Brooks should write a play about you, fools, because while many laughs can be found in such racist works as Blazing Saddles, Spaceballs, Robin Hood Men in Tights, and of course your recently ruined version of The Producers, you dim-minded hacks cannot seem to tell parody from endorsement. You may find it worthy to look up how such comedic history is rooted in mockery as exists in the works of Charlie Chaplin, Laurel and Hardy, and even the Three Stooges, all of whom mock the Nazis on a regular basis in their works. We at The Correct Views would never expect you to know this or much else, and that is why you win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Now, it looks like crap because my printer sucks. It's the producers in the back of this superimposed. Um, it'll be on the thumbnail for this, for the user that want to see it. Friends, that's it. Contact those people. Let me know which, Let me know you did it. Prove to me that you did it. I'm going to send you something awesome. And if you want to send me something awesome, you can do so at The Correct Views. You can hit share. You can subscribe. And if you're going to catch a ride anywhere, go to Facebook and look up Change Transportation. Let them know you listen to The Correct Views. Regardless of where you live, if you're hearing my voice, if he's got people in your area, you'll know you're going to save a fortune by doing this, friends. Good night. God bless.